Hello and welcome to this lesson on phase difference, which is part of the, of the wave topic for AQA A level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you can describe phase difference. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define the concept of phase and phase difference, understand the unit of radians and how to convert between radians and degrees, and then define and calculate the phase difference in a wave, which is part of the AQA A level physics specification for wave waves in 3.3.1.1 progressive waves. So if you were given a diagram like the following, what unit would you use to measure the angle? Now in most examples previously in education, you've learned that angles are measured in degrees. So for example, there are 360 degrees in a circle and there are 180 degrees in a triangle. But what is a degree? Why do we have 360 degrees in a circle? What is, what is a degree in terms of defining it instead of using a geometric shape? in what is in fact the SI unit for an angle. Well, the SI unit for measuring angle is the radian. Now, a radian is the angle made by an arc by, by an arc equal to the radius of a circle. So the circumference of a circle is known to be 2 pi r, where r is the radius. So this implies that 2 pi arcs with the length of, of the radius would fit inside the circle. So we can therefore deduce that there are 2 pi radians in a full circle. So what we can say is one complete rotation, or 360 degrees, is 2 pi radians half a rotation, which is 180 degrees, is pi radians, quarter of a rotation, which is 90 degrees, is pi over 2 radians, so therefore one radian is 360 degrees over 2 pi, so one radian is 57.3 degrees. So you can see here some notable values in radians and degrees. So for example, 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians, 120 degrees is pi over 3 radians, 180 degrees is pi radians, and 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. Now you've got to be able to convert from radians to degrees and vice versa. Now you'll also cover this concept when you look at circular motion later in the A-level physics course. But for example, you could be asked to convert 45 degrees into radians. So we would say that converting from radians to degrees is you is to taking the value of degrees and times it by 2 pi over 360. So in this case, we do 45 times by 2 pi over 360, which works out to be pi over 4 radians. But you've also, if you remember as well, got to ensure that you use the correct number of significant figures. Now this is important when you give answers in terms of pi, because pi is an irrational number, so therefore has an infinite number of significant figures. So this tells us that we can't use pi in, when we're doing practical terms, because this, this implies a pract uh, like a zero level of uncertainty in your answer. Now in experimental works, you'll always have to place your answers to the correct number of significant figures. But as well as convert from degrees into radians, you've got to be able to convert from radians into degrees. So for example, can you convert 2 pi over 7 radians into degrees? So to go from radians into degrees, you times your radians by 360 over 2 pi. So in this case, you do 2 pi over 7 times by 360 over 2 pi, which when you cancel out your 2 pi, gives you 360 over seven which is 51.4 degrees now the radian is a more acceptable unit in a level physics because it's based in mathematics like we said before it's the angle made by an arc equal to the radius of the circle now the degree in itself is an arbitrary unit there's no profound reason or uh, why there's 360 degrees in a circle or what one degree is but there is a profound reason as to the size of the radian it's a link between the circumference and the radian the radius so that's very important when we want to describe abstract mathematical terms. So it's important to know that because there's no profound reason for the size of a degree in angles, that's not a very good unit to use. Now the reason why there are 360 degrees in a circle is the Sumerians, who were a, a people who lived uh, about 2400 BC, watched the sun, the moon and the five visible uh, planets in the night sky, primarily for omens. And they didn't understand the physics behind the motion, but they did notice that the circular track 
of the sun's annual path uh, cro uh, moved across the sky and then it took about 360 days, uh, roughly one year, to complete a circuit. So consequently they divided the circular path of the journey into 360, one for every day of the year, and therefore that's why we believe that there are 360 degrees in a circle. So there is no profound reason in physics as to why 360 degrees should be placed in a circle, which is why it's preferable to measure angles in radians moving forward. Now that's going to be important because in addition to wave quantities that we've looked at previously, such as displacement, amplitude, wavelength, period and frequency, there are several quantities which can measure the differences between different waves. So all progressive waves travel a certain distance. This is a measure of how the energy is propagated. Now the difference in the distances that two waves have traveled is called the path difference and we measure the path difference in units of wavelength, lambda. But you can also consider the position of a certain point along a wave cycle and we call this the phase of the wave. Now the amount by which one wave leads or lags behind another wave is called the phase difference between the waves. Now the phase difference and the phase can be measured in angles in the units of either degrees or more preferably radians. So that's a very important idea that you can do this but you can also measure it in fractions of a wave cycle as well. So let's think about this in a bit more detail. So we can consider a progressive wave to consist of many oscillating particles as shown in the following diagram. Now all of these particles in a wave oscillate about a fixed position and the direction of the particle oscillation either up or down in this example is given by its position in the wave. So you can see here okay, the different uh, directions of oscillation that the different particles are carrying out in this wave cycle. Now you can work out the direction of the oscillation by considering the movement of the wave compared to its equilibrium position. Now it's also important to note that in a progressive wave, whilst the particles themselves oscillate, the energy is transferred in a direction. Now, like we said before, the phase difference is how much a particle lags behind or is ahead of another particle in the wave. Now, particles that are what we call in phase are oscillating with the same displacement and in the same direction as each other. So we say that these particles that are in phase, they have a phase difference of zero. Now, two particles which are one wavelength apart are always thought to be in phase as shown in this particular diagram. So we can say that two points which are one wavelength apart have a path difference of one wavelength because it's just the difference in the distance between them in terms of wavelength. So we can therefore say particles which are in phase are an integer number, a whole number of wavelengths apart. So the path difference for in phase particles is n lambda. Now we can also think of it in terms of phase difference because we can say that the phase difference of particles in phase is n two pi radians as there are two pi radians in one wavelength. Now particles that are out of phase are oscillating with different displacements and or are oscillating in different directions as each other. So you can see here in this example that there's a phase difference between particles that are oscillating out of phase with each other. So you can see this, this example of out of phase particles, this is an example of out of phase particles, but in, to, in your wave you've got a particular special example of out of phase particles and that's when particles are completely out of phase. Now these are particles which oscillate with the same magnitude of displacement but are oscillating in opposite directions. Now another name for particles being completely out of phase is to say that they're in antiphase with each other. So when two particles or two points of a wave are completely out of phase we say they have a phase difference of pi radians or 180 degrees. So two points half a wavelength apart are said to be completely out of phase. So these two points have, uh, have a, half, a half a wavelength apart, so they have a path difference of 0.5 lambda. So therefore we can say the path difference for in phase, for, uh, sorry, for out of phase particles is n over 2 lambda. Now therefore the phase difference for outer phase particles is n pi radians for odd values of n as there are two pi radians in one wavelength. So if we just consider this example, if we look at two particles a wavelength apart such as C and G in this example, we would say that, say that they're oscillating in time with each other because they have the same displacement and they're moving in the same direction. So we say they are completely in phase. Now two points half a wavelength apart such as I and K 
we would always see is moving in opposite directions because they've got the same displacement but they're moving in opposite mo mo have opposite motions they're moving in opposite directions so we say that they are completely out of phase now the phase difference between two points depends on what fraction of a wavelength lies between them now it's also important to note that when you have a path difference greater than lambda or a phase difference greater than 2 pi radians or 360 degrees you can express the path difference or phase di or phase difference in terms of lambda or in terms of 2 pi radians because it's always how far it's moved from the starting position of the wave cycle so for example a phase difference of 3 pi radians between points on a wave is also thought to be pi radians because it's one full cycle which is two pi radians and therefore you've gone back to the start again and therefore it's just pi radians difference so just be aware of that another example would be that a phase difference of five pi radians between points on a wave is also pi radians because you've done two full cycles so you've done four pi radians you've then gone back to the start and then you've moved pi radians from the start so therefore you can see your phase difference to be pi radians another example would be if you've got a phase difference of six pi radians on a wave therefore you've gone three times fully around the cycle you've gone back to the start you've not moved any further so you can say that the phase difference is zero as well as six pi radians so hopefully in this particular lesson we've looked at the oscillations of particles in a medium considering amplitude frequency wavelength speed but more importantly phase and phase difference and the phase difference may be measured as angles in terms of radians or degrees or as a fraction of a cycle. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define the concept of phase and phase difference, understand the unit of radians and how to convert between radians and degrees, and define and calculate the phase difference in a wave. So thank you very much for watching this particular lesson on phase difference, which is part of the waves topic for AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.